Hello, this is Stephen with Singular, and today I'm going to show you how to dock a Singular control application right over here in OBS. We're going to dock it as a control panel so that you can have your graphic rundown list from Singular right in OBS, so you don't have to go back and forth between a browser page and OBS. And then after that, I'm going to add the BitFocus piece. BitFocus is a company that makes a piece of software called Companion, and with Companion, you can control, you can configure a Stream Deck device, and that's the push button device, very popular in streaming these days. So we can send commands using BitFocus um, and the Stream Deck to Singular directly to set payloads, for example, change names, bring in uh, lower thirds, and what have you. Um, and we can also can control OBS. So uh, with the same uh, BitFocus companion. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and minimize. Uh, OBS and bring it over to the side and we're going to go through the steps involved. Uh, it's going to be kind of a long video, hopefully not too bad. Uh, let's bring over, I'm going to jump over here to Chrome. Obviously you need a singular account. So here's our main page. Uh, if we hit login here, um, if you already have an account, you know that you're ready, good to go. If you don't sign up, you'll get the email response and then you are going to get dropped into our dashboard. So what I'd like you to do for today's demo is go ahead and select your account will be listed here. Just right click new folder. Okay. I made one called demo right here. So what I want you to do is go up to the marketplace and I'd like you to try um, download this new glass uh, app. Just let's do glass sports and we'll select uh, let's do basketball. Um, in no particular order. Uh, we just optimized the glass uh, composition in the marketplace, a constant never ending you know, optimization of our, our themes in the marketplace, adding to them and, in, and um, improving upon them. So this one I think is just, just done. So we'll go ahead and download that. And as you know, what happens when you download a uh, package from the marketplace, you get a control application. So if I open this, you'll be in another browser page, right? You can see it opening up here. And we're going to auto populate the playlist for you here on the left. So what I'll do, I just want to focus in on the lower, let's just do a lower super right here. So I'm going to type in my name, Stephen. Oh, little typo this morning, Stephen Heimbold. And then we'll go ahead and hit update. So the goal of this is let's get this right away. Let's get jump. Let's get this output URL. We need this into OBS. So all I have to do is go up here, upper right hand corner. I'm going to copy. Right out, uh, the app output URL has been copied to the clipboard. Let's just tab right back over to OBS, and in OBS again, OBS uh, you download that. Let me just jump over to the OBS site for those of you who might not be familiar with it. OBS is right here, uh, the OBS project. I will include all of these links that I'm referencing in the uh, description of this video. So. Um, Windows and Mac. I was told by a user that I'm not quite sure that the uh, Mac version of OBS allows you to dock a URL into the OBS um, uh, user interface at the moment. I'm not sure the status on that. So if that's the case, this may only be applicable for Windows users at this time. Uh, and I'm not quite sure about Linux. But in any event, I will include the links to these various sites that I'm referencing in this um, uh, demonstration. But OBS project, OBS, and back over to OBS, OBS itself. It's a standalone application. I've already installed it on my computer. I have a scene. You have to have at least one scene in OBS. Let's go full screen on this so it's a little bit easier. And I've got my camera, right, which I added here under the plus. I did a video capture device and went through this uh, process of selecting this camera that's on my laptop. But now we need a browser. A browser, I'm gonna call it Singular, All right? Pretty straightforward, boom. Remember, I copied the output URL from that application that I downloaded, the Glass Basketball app, paste it here, uh, my resolution. It should match what I'm set up in OBS, which is 1280 by 720, and boom, you should get the overlay. Now, what I was mentioning earlier is it's a little awkward. Let's go, let's minimize this code and let's go back over to glass and let's take this. So a lot of users that are using this currently, they're kind of limited because they're sort of like, okay, here we go. I'm going to bring this in. Actually, you only see the preview here and then it has to redraw. It's kind of, kind of awkward. Um, if you have two monitors, not too bad. Again, you might have to refresh studio in this instance to get the, the, the browser page to refresh. Um, so what we're going to do here is simply get this right run down right into OBS. How do we do that? Pretty straightforward. OBS allows for um, uh, 
URLs to be docked into its uh, user interface. So just for a second, you see these are all docked pieces. You can move them around. So if you go under OBS, you go to View, Docks, right? You can turn things off. For example, the controls in the lower left, lower right hand corner, I just turned those off and disappeared. But you can go View, Docks, Custom Browser Dock, and that's what Singular is. Singular is all browser based. So in the case of the Control App, we want to dock the um, control app that's uh, right here on the uh, Chrome browser. So I'm going to take it here and then I'll ask you to name it. So let's just call this um, Glass Basketball because that's the theme that I downloaded. Uh, app. Okay, and now we need the URL. Okay, so if we jump over here, most of you might think you just grab this URL and paste it. Let's see what happens. Actually, this is good. I want to hit apply. It's going to fire this up and it's going to ask you for a login and that is because OBS needs does not have authentication to be able to just go grab this app, right, and load it in um, because uh, this is not a shared um, uh, website, right? It's not open to OBS to be able to access it. So I'll go ahead and close this. How do I get a shared version of this? Pretty straightforward. I'm just going to take uh, Singular Studio. I'm going to go full screen, upper right hand corner. Again, sometimes when you start moving the windows, there you go, preview program. I'm gonna to go to the upper right hand corner here. I'm gonna go manage access for this page, for this application, this browser. And I need to generate, right, a um, application URL. So when I generate it, right, this is what I'm interested in right here, this app URL. Okay, and if you notice, it's got this, this uh, token at the end, right? And that is what makes it accessible to OBS, that token. So if I copy this, for example, just right here, before I even go to OBS, I'm gonna make a new browser tab and paste. Boom, it's the same thing. It's the, uh, it's the user interface, except I'm opening it via with its um, token, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. You can see when I'm logged into Singular, oops, sorry about that, uh, you'll see it just says control. And I can get to this via the internal ID, that's the ID of this app, right? Just real quick, sorry to ramble here. Right here, you can see the ID. This is, I know which app I'm opening within this account. But now we're outside of the account. We're in OBS, back over to OBS for a second. So if I paste this URL with the token attached, let's see what happens. Now I notice this when I hit apply and close, it doesn't pop up the um, the UI with the, the login. Last time I did this, as you could saw when I just did this earlier. Um, and that's, I mean, it's an OBS thing. It's no big deal. If I go under view, docs, it shows up, right? Glass basketball app. I do this, and if you give it a second, it's gonna load this guy exactly the way you see it here into the UI. And I can take this guy and I can dock it. I just moved it over here. I'm gonna go OBS full screen, and I'm gonna move this over. Okay, we're getting close. But if you notice, it's not quite right. The UI, the way we've designed the UI for uh, Studio is in a horizontal aspect ratio, right? The two end of the preview program next to each other, the rundown list, it's not gonna work. And plus we don't need the, this, um, the header, this bar, that, the white header bar at the top. So what we have, I'm gonna minimize uh, OBS a little bit. Okay, well, how do we fix that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the control app. Again, this is manage access is where I grabbed the app URL, I'll copy this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring over this notepad I have here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that URL. Again, this is, um, I'll admit it, it's not the most intuitive thing right out of the gate, but it's not horrible either. Here is the app URL with its shared token. And if I add this modifier at the end of this URL, okay, this is, I'm gonna pop this right here that says no header so i won't get that white header bar at the top and i'm going to force the layout of our ui to go vertical so i'll go ahead and copy this and again this i will include in the um in the notes attached to this video so back over to obs boop, boom and i'm going to go full screen on obs back to where that i think it's under view docs custom browser docs okay and now let's paste this one and hit apply Immediately this URL app, singular app, refreshes, and we've got this nice little UI, right? So for example, I can make my, everything I can do in Studio here, that I do Studio traditionally, 
it, I can do here. So for example, if I go down to Steven, I'm gonna see it in preview. I don't know, maybe if I wanna rename this uh, Steven, and then if I, I can duplicate this, all the same functionality as Studio, it's all, it's just you're pointing the browser right, docking the browser directly into here. And I say singular, I don't know, let's take this one and then let's change the payload, which is right here. And if I hit update, boom, you're gonna see it's gonna update, it can take it off. You get the idea, pretty straightforward, really powerful, much easier doing it that way, especially if you're on a single monitor, right? If you're just on one laptop, you can really do quite a bit with this uh, setup. And obviously it's from OBS, as um, most of you know, it's from OBS that you do your uh, streaming and set up to stream to your CDNs, your YouTube, Facebook, um, and what have you. So let's go to the next piece. The next piece is you're getting a little bit more advanced. You're like, this is cool, but I want to introduce the um, Elgato Stream Deck. What's that Elgato Stream Deck? This guy, I'm sure, hopefully many of you are familiar with a great little device. Um, it comes in a number of different um, form factors with uh, amount of buttons, right? Um, actually, unfortunately, I don't even have mine here today, but it doesn't matter because in the configuration of this, in the uh, software to configure it. Um, there's a third party company that I mentioned earlier. It's called Companion is the name of the software. And it is from a company called BitFocus, right? I'll, again, I'll include this in the notes. Companion, download it. And with Companion, if you open that guy, so I'm gonna go to Companion, fire it up. And what happens is, first thing that's gonna open up you're going to see it's this is web-based software so which is super cool because with a web-based application we can um, send commands to singular singular's uh, web-based uh, cloud uh, application it's going to run on its own local server here so i it fires up and what it's going to do is to say launch uh, ui here in a second still loading not responding give it a second i might have quite a few background processes and things running on this uh, laptop, not entirely sure. There it goes. And then I go launch UI, and guess what? When I hit launch UI, boom, it fires up Chrome. Okay, so the first thing you have to do in Companion is you've got to tell it who you, um, where to send commands. Okay, so right here, this is when I was testing this earlier, I've got Singular and OBS. Let's go ahead and delete this one completely. And I'm not even gonna worry about OBS right now. I'm gonna go ahead and um, delete this one as well. I'm just going to focus in on singular. Blank slate, BitFocus Companion, and again, for configuring, BitFocus Companion can send, uh, use the Stream Deck Elgato um, hardware. Stream Deck also has their own uh, software configuration tool, um, but I find BitFocus Companion much more flexible because I can add lots of devices. And you can see there are a lot of them that they'd support. So we're really going to focus on singular. I start typing in singular, Singular Live, I add it. First thing it asks for, what's your API URL? Okay, API URL, where the heck am I gonna get that? Easy, back over to the control app. Remember under manage access, right? That's sort of the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. We've got an app URL that we used last time and we generated the token, right? Uh, this one we put into um, OBS and we docked it. But this one, now we're going to be sending some commands, right? So we're going to need to use our um, API URL. So simply copy this, and I go back over to BitFocus, which is in this tab, and I just paste it, and I hit Apply. And now when I go over to Instances, you can see it gets a successful connection to Singular, which is great, because that means I can start making buttons. So the buttons, uh, they have this really cool thing, this emulator mode. And this emulator mode will allow you to uh, give you a, a software version of what the physical panel looks like. And I think they default to this one, but again, there's bigger ones and smaller ones and what have you. Let's just do a clean slate. I'm on page 97. It's amazing. You can just program so many buttons. Um, on page 97, I'm going to go here back to the UI. I'm going to go to buttons. And actually, I should go to 97. Those are some other buttons I'd made earlier. Nice clean slate, 97, right here. I click on a button and I say, well, what kind of button do I want? I want a regular button. I got to name it. So let's just name this um, uh, lower uh, third. And it'll type it right into the 
button um, itself and I can change the size. Oh, that's a little big, 14, maybe that's a little small, whatever. Okay, so now we have to tell it to do something. Well, because I added under instances, as you remember, I added singular, because I did that, my key down actions, when I actually physically press on this button, whether physically on the hardware or in software in this emulator mode, um, because I um, added singular, it's gonna show down, show up under key down and key up if you so choose to have key up. So if I scroll all the way down, here's let's do an animate in, okay? And then you have to tell it, what do you wanna animate in? Well, I wanna animate in one of my overlays from my singular package, right? So I want the lower one line. How do I know that's the name? Well, it's pretty straightforward. If I go back over to the control app, let's close this. You can see right here, the template name, lower one line. Okay, that's what I wanna do. I wanna do exactly what I'm doing here Oh, and by the way, just really quick, when I'm over here making changes to the control app here, those same changes will get reflected in OBS, just FYI. So if I do something like this, a little tricky to see if I do this. You see how it's in two places, right? Um, which is really cool. So somebody can be populating your list, building your playlist for you outside remote. That's the beauty of this, this cloud-based um, platform in Singular. Anyways, I ramble. Let's go back over to... Bit focus. We did a animate in lower one line, and now I'm going to do a toggle because on a, the next click of the same button, I want it to go out. So let's go here, singular, out, select the composition, lower one line. And now let's minimize this a little bit. Let's go into emulator mode. And if I click on this, it might already be in the in state. There it goes. Now it's out. So one thing of note when I do this is that unfortunately, but it's not the end of the world, uh, Singular Studio will not reflect the changes. So if you have Singular Studio open, whether it will be it inside of OBS or outside, you'll do it this way because we already took the time to put it inside. If I can just squeeze this over, again, I'm just on one monitor today. And if I go back over to the emulator mode, if you notice, you're not gonna see uh, the updates so that you know um, there's no API, uh, cut to the chase, there's no API for the singular application as of yet. That might change in future versions, uh, which means that if you're going to be sending commands, what we're, for more technical people, rest commands from companion over to singular, you're not going to see those reflect here in the UI. So just be mindful of that. Um, I don't think it's a deal breaker. I think for most things, just taking graphics in and out. You can also, I won't uh, do it in this demo. I'll do it in more detailed demo. You can set payload. So you could make a button called lower third Steven, lower third uh, Jeff, lower third singular, what have you. You click and it will not only take it in and out, but also set the payload, say, change the text here. Um, so covered quite a bit. Um, two really powerful, I'll call them sort of a, um, tools in conjunction with singular. Again, we used OBS, uh, which does our docking of the singular UI right into OBS and it's from OBS that we're gonna to stream to our endpoints, YouTube, Facebook, what have you. Um, and then we also introduced the concept of using BitFocus Companion to configure the Stream Deck device in lieu of Stream Deck software, which is good software and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, this is a little bit more flexible in that we can do two things. Now, one thing I didn't do is I didn't show you how to send commands from Companion to OBS, which has a, another component a web socket, which I'll go into in another um, uh, in another video. But thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully, this, hopefully this was helpful.